I like to listen to my friends scream. Yep, I find it funny. But most multiplayer horror games aren't even remotely scary. How do you take a genre that thrives in making the player feel isolated and alone and put Louie in there? It takes all the fear away. So how do you add it back? That's what I was trying to find out as I tricked my friends into playing a plethora of multiplayer horror games with me. They think I'm being nice by buying them games. They are dead wrong. I just want to laugh at them. Now I noticed pretty quickly the reason why these games aren't scary while playing this super relaxing one. What was it called? Oh yeah, that one. Dropping down a elevator into an abandoned science lab filled with dark corridors, malfunctioning machinery, and flickering lights is enough to put anyone on edge. Until you explore around a little bit and find, uh, these guys. At the end of the day, all horror games rely on making the player feel vulnerable. I have an entire video on how to do exactly that, but as humans are pack animals, having a friend acts as an enormous safety blanket that blocks that feeling of vulnerability. So how did GTFO reintroduce it? It didn't matter how many of us there were, opening a door to a room filled with god knows how many disgusting monsters knowing that if a single one of us messed up, we'd wake the entire room was mortifying. <sighs> okay, ready? One, two, three. Four, five, what the hell? I just built this computer. Why is it running like dog shit? Oh, it's on my Chrome tabs, eating up my memory and processing power. Of course. Introducing Opera GX, the sponsor of this video and the future of internet browsers for gamers. Gone are the days of being too terrified to leave your tabs open with the GX control panel, which lets you easily limit the amount of CPU or RAM Opera is allowed to use. Fun fact, if you look at some of my really old videos, you can see that I used to use Microsoft Edge because my computer didn't have enough RAM to handle gaming and Chrome at the same time. I would have killed for this kind of thing back then. And oh, I think it's trying to kill me now. This is the Opera GX Horror Mod. Yeah, you can mod your browser now. What timeline do I live in? It's got background music, keyboard sounds, tab sounds. Look, even the theme is ghost-like. And if instead you want a break from the action, boom, here's a lo-fi mod or a Minecraft winner. <gasps> You can date the mascot for a mod. Yeah, custom animated backgrounds too. You can even mix and match sounds and effects from each mod to totally customize it with anything from the GX store. If re-adding all your extensions, browser history, bookmarks, and cookies scares you, boom, use a quick import tool and bring them all over without a second thought. We've even got a special Stellar J landing page where you'll be able to get a live feed of my most recent 12 videos that is only available with the link in the description and pinned comment. So use my link below to download Opera GX today. God, there we go. Now back to, oh. We all died. You see, GTFO puts players at a huge disadvantage. Your health and ammo is extremely limited. You can't just oh. kick the door down and start blasting like it's fucking battle bit. There is no M249, this is real life. If you want to survive, you have to tackle it in the most tense way possible. You could have chopped a goddamn carrot in my asshole with how tight that thing got, waiting for the horde to reach us as they slammed against the doors, tearing at them and screaming bloody murder. If there's one thing GTFO is good at, it's hammering home the fact that you are not in control, you are the hunted, and it doesn't matter how many of you there are. They severely limit your options for fighting back, ripping away that confidence and putting the group back on edge. Don't say it, 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 don't say it. Pacify is a great example of a multiplayer horror game that never really learned how to walk or uh, sit up properly or really do anything right. There's absolutely no tension buildup or suspense, no foreshadowing or creepy events to give our minds time to imagine what horrors await us. You know, <laughs> things that make a game scary. It's just a giant fetch quest with one monster that only aggroes onto one person at a time. You know what that sounds like? Hot potato. You made hot potato into a horror game. It was funny to hear my friends get startled by the jump scares until we discovered that if you just give it a dollar chicken, it fucks right off. So we spent the majority of our time in no danger whatsoever and then got a free no you card every time something happened. It completely trivialized the monster. Obviously they messed that up, but there's something much more important that both of these games blundered almost instantly, like in the first minutes. You see, we loaded into Pacify, went around to the back of the first house, entered through the basement, and right here, that was it. If it wasn't obvious what happened, feel free to rewind the video giving me extra watch time and therefore feeding my lavish and irresponsible YouTuber lifestyle, or let's look at another game that totally fixed this problem. Escape the Backrooms is a game made by a YouTuber with multiplayer added as an afterthought, and somehow it makes every other multiplayer horror game look like a goddamn K-pop video. gonna let that happen. At this point, I had one hit and one miss. If I wanted my friends to stay on board, I needed backrooms to work out. And when we spawned in, the first thing we noticed was, yes, proximity chat, yes. This is not the first time I've said it on this channel and it won't be the last. Put proximity chat in every single video game ever. All of them, put it in everyone. You could honestly ignore everything I say in this video. If it has proximity chat, there is a good chance that it is at least a seven out of 10 multiplayer horror game. So we start walking around and after a bit of goofing off, <laughs> We realized that, damn, this place is big and confusing. And if we stray too far from each other, we're gonna get lost for sure. How did you get over Help? there? And also, okay, 
Where do we go? You see, Pacify gave us absolutely no reason to stick together. We split up almost instantly, and it's actually more annoying to stay as a group. Escape the Backrooms heavily incentivizes players to stick together and dick around a little bit, intentionally giving them that sense of security we talked about earlier, specifically, so it can be taken away. Yeah, I picked up the key. The monsters might only attack one person at a time, but because you're in a group, you have no idea who it's going after, as it screams over the voice chat, making coordination impossible, and everyone just scatters. The horror in this game does not come from the shitty monster models or animations. It comes from knowing that something just attacked your friends, separated you, and now you don't know where it or your homies are. It makes you terrified to do so much as turn a corner or look behind you. People who watched my last video will recognize this as both fear that attacks the mind and fear created via gameplay. The isolation and subsequent vulnerability you feel is exactly how to bring that fear factor back. This is why you need proximity chat, people. It is impossible to feel alone and creeped out in a fucking four-way Discord call. I will say, though, that the quality is a little bit inconsistent. Fuck the hotel level. And this dumbass hallway. And this lame camera section. These stupid-ass birds. Ugh. I promise it's fun, but just be warned that one of my friends did rage quit over this stupid-ass letter section. So probably just use Game Shark for that section if you can. I felt very pressured to stick with my team in Sons of the Forest, too. The second I crawled out of that helicopter, I was completely floored by all the- Holy shit! Oh my- Holy shit, it looks so good! How is this possible? It's winter now? Wait, look at them craft that thing! Sons of the Forest is not a balls-to-the-wall adrenaline rush, but after Backroom, it was exactly what we needed. We spent the majority of our time building and fishing and hunting. It was almost relaxing. Subnautica has always felt like a very 50-50 survival horror game to me, whereas this is closer to 80-20, which actually makes the scary moments stand out all that much more. It's all fun and games and breezy beaches until, uh-oh, that's a human scarecrow. Hearing all those shrieks and screams echo through the caverns before some, whoop, before some disgusting abomination lunged at me from the darkness or defending my campfire from cannibals at night was the worst thing I've done in a while. And then I undeafened on Discord. I need a real knife to like hurt hands. people. Yeah, it's pretty scary until your friend starts butchering the native population so he can make a quote bone throne in the attic. I'm so excited. Where is it? <laughs> When we're together, we are a unit. We attacked with each other, defended one another, hunted together. We built this sick-ass log cabin with these two lookout towers. Wait a minute. And yeah, another portal. We definitely stayed together to survive, but there was never any attempt made to separate us. If we did, it was on our own terms. You split up in a lot of games, but it's only scary if I'm split up when I don't want to be. Now, despite not meeting my first two criteria, I still somehow managed to get a bunch of funny screams out of my friends because it's something that Sons of the Forest actually excels at. The cannibals on the island start out relatively harmless. You'll catch glimpses of them watching you from trees or shrubbery, you know, just, just checking you out. And if you leave them alone at this stage, they'll be totally docile. But you see, we had a bone throne to build. Peace was never an option. And because we fought back so ruthlessly, the cannibals started doing a little bit more than just scouting. They started to bring weapons and armor, the frequency of their attacks increased, and before we knew it, we were getting woken up in the middle of the night to full-on sieges. They started tearing down our defenses and bring- Oh my god, what is that?! And that's just on the surface. With every new cave came a new amalgamation of flesh and bone and a new breadcrumb to lead us to the next hellhole. When you're with your boys, the same types of jump scares, monsters, or imagery gets old way faster than when you're alone because you rationalize it together. So Sons of the Forest constantly changes its attack patterns to accommodate. There's also one wheels. This is a good game. The LS Trials has gore and crazy people. Wait, that's it? Is there like suspense and buildup? No, you just got a, you got a crazy person, a crazy person. Look at all those crazy people. Hey, check out this guy we saw it in half. Listen, once you've been harassed by the crazy psycho drug dealer once or seen someone grind into pixie dust once, it's never gonna be the same again. It's just gross overkill. They're trying to be shocking by shoving all this gore and imagery down your throat. But as per, you know, the definition of shocking, you can't shock someone in the exact same way twice. When you're hiding in a closet or dark room trying not to get seen by the schizo California man, yeah, it's pretty intense. But when you just want to open a fucking gate in the middle of a well-lit hallway and massacre his police officer over here won't get out of your grill, it's just frustrating and annoying. If you're not going to give me any way to fight back, that's fine. Backrooms does it, and my first point was literally to limit options for fighting back, but they took it way too far. Backrooms GTFO in the forest also didn't make me kite and train the same obnoxious enemy over and 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 over! To be fair, the proximity chat filter was probably the funniest I've ever heard. Let me up. Okay, all right, good luck, Louie. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you gotta help me. You gotta help me. <laughs> now what? Now what? Oh, my God. <laughs> but it turns into a radio the second anyone gets far enough away. How is this any different from a Discord call? Wake up, people. The Skinner man was almost scary until Tico realized, oh, okay, you can just pick any direction and run, and you'll be hunky-dory. He then told me about that once I got psychosis, and boom, zero fear. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, it's the youngest game I'm talking about today. I have faith that it'll get better. I just wouldn't recommend it in its current state because of its biggest problem, which longtime viewers of the channel have probably already guessed. Come on, assholes. You knew we were talking about fast today. Are you kidding me? I hate this game with an explosive passion for all the right reasons. It did everything right. First of all, at the end of the day, this is a multiplayer game. I want to have fun with my friends. And Phasmophobia gave us ample time to shoot the shit with each other as we explore the haunted locations. Hey. Hey. Are you suck? I'm sorry. <laughs> It totally lured us into a false sense of security by incentivizing us to stick together with the proximity chat. And yeah, radios. Thankfully, unlike someone over here, these ones aren't automatic. You have to physically put away whatever you're holding to trade it for the radio, which now occupies one of your hands while using it. So it's possible to slightly alleviate the discomfort and vulnerability of being alone, but it may bust it up in an annoying ass way, which keeps it somewhat scary. Until suddenly... Come in. Everyone stops answering. Guys? Guys? The point of the game is to enter haunted locations and identify what type of ghost lurks inside by paying attention to what attributes it displays. And some ghosts will only activate and be detectable if someone is alone in the house. So on multiple occasions, our group was forced to vote someone off the island and abandon them in a house with a fucking demon inside. Nope. Uh-uh. Nope. Goodbye. Yeah, I'm right behind you, buddy. Just stay in there. You're not. You're outside. <laughs> oh my goodness. And the opposite is also common, with one player in the truck and everyone else inside. Not to mention everything that happens when the ghost decides to stop messing around, which I just learned is called a hunt that made it way scarier. I'm leaving again. I'm going up uh, goodbye again. They go hard with the sense horror here, and you have basically no way to fight back. Incense and crucifixes have limited uses okay. and only work in specific instances, and there's also a decent amount of different ghost models and events to keep things scary. But there was just something that took Phasmophobia over the edge for me and my friends. Something that made it one of the most terrifying games I've ever played. The flashlights provide extremely limited visibility so as not to give the player any comfort. House noises and the occasional object getting thrown are a constant reminder for players not to feel safe, and once the group gets near enough to a ghost without showing itself, it'll flicker the lights, break bulbs, burn your crucifix, groan, tell you to die or get out, and a bunch more shit that should be illegal to do to people in VR. We barely ever got to actually see the ghost, and that kept it scary because, like I said in the last video, your mind will always imagine things to be scarier than they actually are. And critically, this stuff is very hard to miss and it happens frequently. When attacking the mind, in a multiplayer horror game, you have to be much more obvious. Every single game that actually managed to scare my friend group did this. That post-chase dread not knowing how many of your friends are dead in the back rooms, the screaming and pounding of sleepers in GTFO, and the absolute whirlwind of terror inflicted by the ghosts of Phasmophobia. This is how you scare a group of people. When it's just you getting scared and you know your friends are fine, it alleviates the fear. But when you're terrified and you know without a shadow of a doubt that your friends are just as scared as you because Look at this shit! That is where multiplayer horror flourishes, and that is infinitely more scary than anything single-player horror can create. So I done it! I, I, I did it! I found the game that feeds me infinite funny clips of my friends crying in agony, and my quest to laugh at them was complete! Except, uh, one thing. We also found out that I am without a doubt the biggest baby in the group, and there's probably four times as many clips of me screaming than anyone else. Shit. Look, it's gonna stop. It's gonna stop. It didn't stop it! It's not stop stopping! <laughs> So next time you're upset that Haunted House season isn't year-round, keep in mind that multiplayer horror games actually can be just as, if not scarier, than regular horror games. Okay, really quick, two other games I didn't talk about. SCP is full of a bunch of squeakers and it isn't scary in the slightest, but it can be fun at times. And Dead by Daylight feels more like a party game than a horror game to me, so I didn't talk about it. Here's a tier list of every game mentioned in this video based on scariness and on how fun they were. More clips of me being a baby as well as behind the scenes are on Patreon. Thank you to my $20 patrons, Time Traveling Ferret, Greg Ruiz, Pipinetta, Rux Aro, The Self-Proclaimed Intellectual, Unfunny Skeleton, and Your Mom. And download Opera GX for a free virtual girlfriend. Okay, bye!